and that was why, in July 1939, he called on his old friend. Szilard's mission was to show Einstein that the formula he had thought up in 1905, E equals MC squared, had a new and terrible reality with the element uranium. Szilard had always been someone who believed he had the, the, the mission of saving the world, and here, abruptly, through a scientific discovery, was a very practical situation where the world might need saving. Hey, Professor. I need your help. It's a lot to have in your head as you knock on a door. Szilard had come to tell Einstein about his recent work on the chain reaction, and that this breakthrough meant a bomb was now a real possibility. Daran habe ich gar nicht gedacht. I hadn't thought of that. Sometimes I think I have thought of little else. Certainly not for the past six years. Secondary neutron reaction. Multiple neutrons splitting multiple atoms and continuing. Ah. Multiple neutrons splitting multiple atoms and continuing. You were sure the chain reaction could be sustained? That's what Fermi and I have been working on. So. The release of energy would multiply. The reaction would be enormous. Just imagine. I know. But just imagine. Just imagine this. Say if a atomic device was introduced into, say, New York. Say such a bomb was taken into New York Harbor in the hold of a ship. And say it was detonated. What would the destruction be? And soon, such a bomb could be in the possession of Herr Hitler. What should we say in this letter? Once uh, Einstein heard about this, he thought about it, and within a few minutes, he realized, yes, this is what E equals mc squared means. At that point, his abstract pacifism, if you will, would have become an intensely practical question. What can I personally do to limit somehow the possibility that these men could work on this weapon? The famous pacifist, now began to write a letter to the president. In the last four months, it has been made probable... Calling for America to build the most powerful weapon ever constructed. To set up a nuclear chain reaction in an amount of uranium... Bigger. Huh? Bigger. A large mass. A large and mass of uranium. It is conceivable, yeah. though much less certain, that extremely powerful bombs of a new type may thus be constructed. How powerful? You know how powerful. Would Roosevelt, should we not make it plain that this would be no ordinary bomb? Yes. Yes, we should. It is almost certain that this can be achieved in the future. Too hazy. The future. We need to say that the Germans can get it at any time. The, uh... I believe, therefore, it is my duty to bring to your attention the following facts and recommendations. Yours, very truly, Albert Einstein. Eight weeks later, Einstein's letter was taken to the White House. I think that any letter written by Albert Einstein would get a president's attention. Roosevelt's reaction was, so, you're afraid the Nazis are going to blow us up. 
Yes. In that case, he called in his military aid and he says, this demands action. It was now a question of who would build an atomic bomb first. The Americans or the Nazis. In the wilderness of New Mexico, the US government set up a top secret project, codenamed Manhattan. From Einstein's letter grew the biggest and most remarkable collaboration between science and the military the world has ever seen. The government spent something like $2.2 billion, which translated into modern dollars would be perhaps 40 or 50 billion dollars. As much as it later cost to send a man to the moon. It was considered absolutely vital to the security of the Allied forces. The Manhattan Project brought together some of the finest minds physics has ever produced. Among them were many European scientists who had fled the Nazis, including Leo Szilard. Einstein himself played no part. The scientists were driven by the fear that the Nazis might get there first. But in May 1945, before the bomb was complete, all the calculations changed. The Nazis surrendered. On behalf of the Army of the United States, I accept your surrender. The war in Europe was now over. For some of the Manhattan Project scientists, and for Einstein, there could now be no justification for the US to use an atomic weapon against anyone else. Most of the scientists were idealists, and some of them were very naive idealists. Einstein, probably one of those. He really was thinking in terms of a deterrence, trying to keep Germany from using this bomb. But although there was no longer any threat from the Germans, work at Los Alamos continued. And in July 1945, Two months after the Nazi defeat, the bomb was ready. The bloody war against Japan was still raging. And the generals and politicians believed that the atomic bomb could bring about a swift end to the fighting and save thousands of Allied lives. Leo Szilard was horrified that the bomb might be dropped without a specific warning first being given. He organized a petition among his colleagues, calling on the president to give this warning. But there was now no stopping the use of the bomb. They'd spent lots of money, they had a weapon that could win the war very quickly, and in that sort of situation they were going to use it. A target had been selected. The Japanese city of Hiroshima. On a bright morning in August 1945, the first atomic bomb was dropped. It fell through the air for 43 seconds, and then a single neutron started Szilard's chain reaction. The energy released as the first atom of uranium was split was only enough to make a grain of sand jump. Then the chain reaction became unstoppable. 